Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Welcome again in awe of Allah, reflection on Allah's divine names. How many times do you read the Holy Quran and you're reading a verse and then you get to the end of the verse and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa huwa al-Aziz al-Hakim, or another combination of Allah's names. And without knowing it, we almost skim by it or just read it and move on. I'll tell you an incredible story. One time a Hafiz of the Holy Qur'an, somebody that memorized the Qur'an, was reciting a verse. And as he recited the verse, he ended the verse, and he is Allah Ghafoor Rahim. He is the most forgiving, the most merciful. What's incredible is that somebody from the audience that didn't memorize the Qur'an said the verse doesn't end like this. So the Hafiz told him, how could you say this? I memorized the Qur'an and you don't know this verse. Do you know this verse? He didn't know it. And so they went back to the written copy of the Holy Qur'an and they reviewed it and indeed the verses didn't end like this. They ended and he is Aziz Hakim, he is Almighty, all, all wise. So they, he was wondering, how did you know this and you didn't memorize the verse? In fact, the person responded, when you recited the, that verse, the meanings of that verse weren't appropriate for Allah's attributes of forgiveness and mercy. They were things that described His power and, he, and he, that He is Al-Aziz and Almighty and, all, and wise. So I knew it from the meaning of the verse. This is the station that we should be aspiring to. Getting so close to the meaning of the verse that we see, it's not that we skim past the end of the verse, it's that we recognize that Allah's names they sum up the entire meaning of the verse and what is beyond the verse. I say this because today's name is all over the Holy Qur'an. 92 times this name came in the Holy Qur'an. And yet how many of us are missing out on the opportunity to know Allah through this name? Today's name is the name of Allah, Al-Aziz, which means the Almighty. It means even more than the Almighty. Al-Aziz means many things in the Arabic language and in the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I know once I saw, said this name, each of you immediately said, yes, we hear this name all the time in the Holy Quran. So what does Al-Aziz mean? Al-Aziz, one of its meanings is that he has no equal. There is nothing comparable, no equal to him. And we can take this meaning from the verse there is nothing like him, nothing that can be compared to him. So Al-Aziz is the Almighty, he is above everything, nothing can be compared to him that is in existence and everything that is in existence was created by him. But another meaning of this great divine name is that he is the undefeatable that cannot be overcome. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his command his decree cannot be repelled. And even when we see a tyrant or a wrongdoer or somebody that is doing wrong on earth and we think that he is overcoming Allah's command, the name of Allah Al-Aziz tells us this is not so. In fact, this person is being given respite, being given a period of time by, by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. But the one that is given time by Allah is not forgiven by Allah, is not forgotten by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in the Holy Quran, when shaitan asked, he asked for time, time to try to lead the children of Adam astray because he knew he could not overcome and could not equal Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Aziz is also one, is linked to many names of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's also mentioned Look as you recite the Holy Qur'an, look for the mention of Al-Aziz with many other divine names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the most common combinations, for example, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Know that Allah is Almighty, All-Wise. The name of Allah Al-Hakim comes with Al-Aziz because with great power, even as we see among human beings, we see people misuse power. We see people misuse authority. They use it to oppress others or, or do wrong by others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Aziz, always exacts His power and authority upon ultimate wisdom and with due measure. And also, part of our belief in Allah, Al-Aziz, 
is our belief in His judgment and His wisdom. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power comes with something that we may like, not like, it comes with sickness, it comes with death of a loved one, it comes with a tribulation. It is human nature not to desire or like any of these things. But when they come, they come with Allah's wisdom and with Allah's absolute power. And so we accept them knowing that this life is not perfect, knowing that this life is a test and in full understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom in this decree. But Allah Al-Aziz, He also says, وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ He is the Almighty, the most merciful. Most of us would think these names don't go together. One is talking about power and might, and the other about mercy and softness and gentleness. But this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although He is the Almighty, He is able to humiliate any foe. He is able to do anything with His power. Nonetheless, He uses that might and authority with mercy to His servants. And all of the mercy that we experience in this world is just but a small part, one part of His mercy and 99 parts have been reserved with Him for the Day of Judgment when He will show mercy to His servants upon this, on this difficult day. A Saadi, a, a scholar says something beautiful about Al-Aziz that I wanted to share with you. He said that Allah Al-Aziz, He's not just it's not just about general might and power, but He is mighty in all things. He is mighty in His strength, in His power. He is in utterly insurmountable. None of creation can match Him, and He can overcome everything. All in existence is subdued before Him and is humbled before His greatness. My brothers and sisters, one of the worst feelings you can feel is to be humiliated. For someone in a position of authority to do wrong by you and you don't have the ability to say anything. For someone to accuse you, to accuse you in your honor, to accuse you of cheating, to accuse you of doing wrong and you know you're innocent, but you are powerless to show your innocence, you're powerless even to reply with a word. Or as we see throughout the world today, so many people suffering at the hands of injustice and wrong and they are powerless to change their state. One of the things that gives these people hope is to know that they are connected with that incredible source of strength and honor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the person that is the servant of Allah al-Aziz should lift their head and hold their heads high and recognize that they are linked to a power with no match. They are linked to the greatest source of honor and decency and dignity in the entire world. They are linked to Allah Al-Aziz. And so I want to close with a piece of advice for myself before all of you during this month of Ramadan. One of the scholars says something incredible. He says, I knocked upon the doors of Allah's worship, upon the doors of Salah, of Siyam, of fasting, of all of these good doors, and I found them full of Allah's servants. So I knocked upon the door of humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I found very few people there. So in this month of Ramadan, worship Allah with a new flavor. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your humility and your simplicity before Him. Humble yourself before Him and He will give you strength with His incredible vastness. Lower yourself to Him and ask Him because of your weakness, because of your poverty, He will grant you from His richness and His incredible stores because He owns what is in the heavens and the earth. I want to close with a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that gives us three doors on which to knock on, seeking Allah's mercy through this name Al-Aziz. And I think inshaAllah Ramadan or perhaps even today, each of us could be honored with seeking Allah through all of these three doors. The Prophet ﷺ says, ما نقصت صدقة من مال That charity does not reduce in wealth. So each of you, when you give in charity this Ramadan, know that Allah will replace it with its like 
and better and more. And then we have the name of Allah Al-Aziz. وَمَا زَادَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا عِزَّةً Allah does not increase a servant who pardons and forgives except in status and stature and honor. So if you have somebody that you've been fighting with or, or an old quarrel or a bitter thing that's left a bad taste in your mouth, forgive. Forgive the person. Let bygones be bygones. Let Ramadan be the start of a new page. You might think this is a humiliation for you, but the Prophet promises Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah will increase you in stature. And the last thing he says, وَمَا تَوَاضَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ And this is the act of worship that we made the commitment together to worship Allah with. None humbles themselves before Allah except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises them. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to raise all of us in stature this Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to leave Ramadan with forgiven sins, with accepted worship. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those that forgive, so we are forgiven. Allahumma ameen, ameen. We'll see you next time. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al-Wadud, meaning the loving. And you know, this is one of those names of Allah. If you're sitting in the masjid and you 